Well, Chev, great to sit down and have a chance to talk to you. Fight week number two as a professional is here. You're back at the O2 Arena, three months on from the debut. Mm -hmm. Since that win, how's life been? Apart from what's going on with Arsenal, of course, which we just spoke about off camera, but how good does it feel to be back? I know, it's great. Um, I'm not sure many people can say they've had back-to-back -back O2s like at the start of their career. And um, just living up the road, as I said in my first interview, that it's great that um, people that love and support me and my local community, the London home-based fans, can come out and watch, do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm very grateful for it. Um, and I'm just ready to go out there and destroy someone. You were in the office last week in good spirits, pacing around, doing a bit of shadow boxing. Uh, Sam says you've looked great in the gym, but like you say, is mm -hmm. are you beginning to really lock in now? How excited are you to, to be stepping back through the ropes this Saturday night? Yeah, I'm very excited. I, I, as I said, I just want to damage somebody and um, not, to, not, not to take his words, but it's just business. Let's get it done. Well, we'll come on to, to talk about the, the main man, Joshua Boazzi, a little bit later on. Let's just have a, a little bit. I know you're not one for necessarily looking back, but we just want to talk about the professional debut. Because I know afterwards you, you told me, look, as long as the people around me were happy, mm. then I'm happy. But now you've had a little bit of time to process it. Have you sat down with Sam and watched it back yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah I watched it back. Um, I watch myself more than I watch anything else. So. Yeah, I've studied it and just, uh, obviously I just look for all the faults that anybody else would be looking for and I've been working on them and just um, working to, to be the best I can be. How would you, you rate that performance out of 10 from, from that night? It was decent, it was okay. You know, um, we got the win, that's the main thing. Um, but I think it showed what I'm about, um, you know, being vicious, um, just hurting people, that's, that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to play about and mess around in the ring. Do you, know what I mean? you, get, you don't get paid for overtime, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. And I, I asked your good friend, uh, Galau Yafai, this mm -hmm. question in New York. I just said, when you, you watch back the debut, what little improvements do you hope to show? What do you think you'll be satisfied with on, on Saturday? Satisfied with a win. And I don't, it's like football for me. It don't matter how you win, as long as you win. But, um, yeah, we, we've been working on stuff in the gym and then it's for you guys to come back and say, you know what, you've done this really well. I like, you know, that's, that's what I work on. The first interview we did, I was just talking to you about this a little bit off camera. Obviously, you've done some media bits within the Team GB squad, but you seem a lot more relaxed now. Uh, and it certainly seems to me like a bit of your personality is beginning to come out now. Are we beginning to see little bits of Chev Clark shining through? Are you trying to say I, I, don't have, I didn't have a personality? In I, think you were, I think you're a bit nervous, Chev, to be honest with you. It's not nervous, it's... Um, if I don't know you, I, I'm just, you know... I, I'm very visual first, and then, like... As I start to get to know you a bit better, I just... You know what I mean? But I'm always me. It's just that you don't reveal everything to people in that first base, do you know what I mean? You never know who's out there watching or trying to, yeah? So that's how I operate. Keep your cards close to your chest a little yeah. bit at first. Yeah. And that personality we're beginning to see shining through, though. Sam just told me there that you're the maddest and funniest man in the gym. Um, how do you try and attack each day, Chef? Because you strike me as a, a very positive person, just the way you communicate with everyone on WhatsApp even. But what do you tell yourself when you wake up each day? Um, I can't tell you exactly what I tell myself, but... I just know that I go out and try to make the best of every day and anybody that I come in contact with, I try to leave them with a smile because you don't know what people are going through. And um, like I might ask you, yo, Jamie, how you doing? And you'd be like, I'm fine, but are you really fine though? So because people won't tell you that, I just try to, to put a smile on people's face. You know, if, if you're somebody close to me, even if it's somebody I don't know. Like, I, as Sam said, I'm a, I'm a random guy, bro. Like, if I see a guy running down the road, I'll wind the window down and be like, yo, <laughs> keep going. Do you know what I mean? Just a little random thing on, uh, and just try to help somebody get along. And that makes my day a good day, you know? Do you think it's important to, to spread that positivity? I think a lot of the time, perhaps, people don't necessarily take the care to, to ask others how they're feeling. Is that why it's important to you? Yeah, 100%. 100%. As I said, um, there's a lot of depression in the world right now, and loads of different mental strains. So um, I don't do it because of that, but it's just how I was brought up, and I, I just genuinely enjoy communicating with people and leaving people with a positive vibe. Brilliant. Um, one thing I do want to ask you about is you said you're always going to be the type of fighter who lets your hands do the talking. This mm -hmm. 
new catchphrase which seems to be appearing a bit more on your social media talks cheap free wi-fi yeah where, like where on earth i like it but where on earth <laughs> does that come from so my favorite artist um is fabulous and like if you want to hear punchlines and like back to back like you know um and uh, me and Boetsy actually really likes this thing. Um, there's one of his songs, and he goes, talks cheap, free Wi-Fi, because free Wi-Fi is everywhere, in it? And everybody loves chatting on free Wi-Fi, so that's what it means. Just talk to me about your relationship with, with Joshua Boetsy then. This fight for him is an important one, mm -hmm. um, but do you believe this is the type of fight against this level of opponent where we will see him shine? Um, yeah, I think... Uh, both of them, first and foremost, it, it will bring out the best in both of them. And um, I personally like it because everybody wants to keep a zero, but um, all the greats that we speak of, most of them don't have a, a zero. And Mayweather, Mayweather is an exception, right? But um, when I think of great boxer, I think of like the Sugar Ray, um, Robinson, etc. And this is why I like this fight, because they're putting it all on the line, do you know what I mean? And does it mean you're not a great fighter because you've got a, a loss? No. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a great fight. The crowd's going to get, um, the fans are going to get entertained and um, we're going to get entertained and it's, gonna, it's a great night for British boxing. What sort of advice uh, was JB able to, to offer you, Chef, when you turned over? You know what, yeah, Josh, um, I give him his, his flowers while he's alive. Um, he's given us a lot of um, credit. Even before um, turning over, while I was on GB, you know what I mean, he just just gave you them little pointers that you wouldn't necessarily know. Do you know what I mean? And you might not need them, but it's good to know that you can have them. And honestly, he's been um, a revelation in helping me turn over as well. So credit to where he's due, man. Now, Chev, we couldn't do this interview without me talking about a few events that have happened uh, in the last fortnight. Let me just paint the picture for, for those who might not know. We're in New York. Jake mm -hmm. Paul is doing a media huddle with Eddie Hearn. He says, I'll fight anyone on your roster who's under 10 and 0. Eddie Hearn straight away, Chev Clark, mm -hmm. 1 and 0. Uh, it blows up mm -hmm. on social media. Just talk to me from your perspective about what you remember finding out and how the sequence of events panned out. Bro, oh, um, my coach is over there. I had a hard day. Like hard. I got home at 7, 7.30, had a little shower and that, and my little nephew was running around the house. So I was in the room and he comes in, he goes, uh, and then he played with me for five minutes and then he got bored and left. So I was tired, so I turned my phone off, which is rare, went to bed. And I thought I was going to sleep until 7.30 the next morning, woke up at 12.30, turned on my phone, it was on silent as I said, and he was like, I, I, I went back like that, I put the phone down, and I was like, wait, that's me. And then that's when I saw it, and I was like, okay, I replied to this in the morning. I turned the phone off, woke up, and then I just tagged Eddie thing, um, the, the guy, and just put a pen in a contract, and, and that was it. And then something else was said a, little, a couple of days later, I think, and I was just like, yo, talk's cheap, free Wi-Fi. And then I... Because I was, I was so confused because you'd been on one tick for hours. I thought, I don't know what I've done to upset Chevy. I think he's blocked me. But then when we come to the next day, I was like, look, we're going to set this FaceTime up with Eddie. Yeah. Uh, I FaceTimed, uh, you FaceTimed Eddie on my phone. And, and the numbers were incredible for that mm -hmm. video. You know, over 1.8 million impressions on Twitter, 300,000 views on Twitter, over 100,000 views on YouTube. Mm -hmm. For you and your profile at this stage, mm -hmm. how, how good has that been? And have you noticed a, a nice little spike in your social media following as well? Yeah, it's been, um, I've had a lot of traction from it. Um, there's been a little spike. Um, but more so, it's just the amount of messages that's come through. Um, I don't know what he's done to the world, but I have not read a message where they're like, he's gonna do this or he's gonna do that. It's just like, please save us all from this guy and put him on his ass. Or like, there'll be people out, like, you know what, don't even knock him out, just play with him. <laughs> so it's been it's been interesting and um I've tried to reply to as many people as possible but it's just all love man. I appreciate all you guys um showing support. I'll say one thing about Jake, but we certainly a showman but also certainly did a fantastic job in, in the co promotion for Taylor Serrano. But one question I'll ask you then, Chev, mm -hmm. uh, what do you believe would happen? Have you ever seen him fight? What happens if you're in the ring with Jake Paul? I mean I've bro, before this I've never seen him, so I don't watch YouTubers, I watch boxers. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's me, and uh, as I said, talk's cheap. You know?
Well said. Let's go back to business then. This Saturday, at this stage of your career, as someone who's boxed around the world against all manner of opponents, mm -hmm. with all due respect to, to who you're in the ring with this weekend, have, mm -hmm. have you seen anything of him? Do you, do you watch anything of him? Yeah, yeah um, in teams, uh, watch. you have to watch everybody. You can't, you can't disrespect people because he'll come back and slap you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, we've done our research and um, yeah, we're going to go out and put on a show. And he's never been stopped, uh, I don't believe. Is it in your interest to, to follow up the debut and, and keep the streak going? It's in my interest to win. And however that win comes, I'm happy. That's, the, that's all that matters. Um, just finally then, Chev, I do want to ask you one final question mm -hmm. about the main event. Uh, it's a fight that we, we can't wait for. Craig Richard certainly proved his worth, mm -hmm. didn't he, against Dimitri Bivo, and that's mm -hmm. a fight that has aged quite well. Mm -hmm. When you visualise this fight in your mind, what do you believe JB does have to do to beat Craig Richards? Um, he just has to be um, JB, you know, um, do what Josh does and, um, you know, just do what Josh does and, and do it well. Because I think if he goes out of character, not that he's an actor, but if he goes out of character and try to box, then it, it might be a difficult night. But yeah, if he does what he does, cut the range down, then yeah, you'll be a, a lot more successful. Chef Clark, look forward to seeing you back in action on The Zone this weekend. Thanks for your time.